Our tradition talks of a God who searches our innermost thoughts, and in order to know those innermost thoughts, searches our, our innards. I know that if God were to search many of our innards now, it would be like that whale after it spits Jonah out. However, our thoughts come out into the world. They come to life in small, intimate ways. The people who we are are displayed to our Places friends and like our family. The kitchen, the living room, the dining room, sitting in the car together. Places where real life takes place. And yet, when we're asked in September, what's happening, where were you this summer? We transport ourselves to the landmarks, to the monuments, and the beaches, the walks and the shows, the big and the unusual. But most of these trips, we know, were spent in mundane conversation. Where are we going to eat next? Can you find my sunglasses? Pass me the book. Let's make sure we have enough water and sunscreen. We often think of God and Judaism the same way. That Judaism takes place on the big days. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Pesach, in these big locations in time. It does. But it also takes place in the kitchen beforehand and while shopping, making choices around the menu. It takes place while you are doing the dishes, while you are talking to family or the person helping, in the way that we talk to family and the people helping, with kindness, in the wages we pay and the time off we provide, in the details. Some attribute this phrase to Abby Abraham Warburg. It is in the minutia, in the details, year, that God can be found. Jonathan Safran Foyer, the New York author published a new book, Here I Am, a call out to the one of the High Holy Day readings that we read on Rosh Hashanah. In his book, Here I Am, he discusses a question of how we can be there as Abraham was for his son Isaac and also be there for God, as Abraham was in that same story. How is there a catch-22? Is there a conflict when we say, here I am, both to God and work and our ideals and the things we want to see made in this world, and also here I am to our children, as we're trying to be there fully for them in the lives that they are trying to lead. He gave an interview about this book, with Terry Gross of the NPR show Fresh Air in a beautiful conversation. In it, they talk about memory and love and loss. One loss that the two of them dwell on for a big part of the interview is the loss of Maurice Sandek, the author of Where the Wild Things they Are. They dwell on his final interview, which he gave to Terry Gross. In it, Foyer and Gross both recall the line that Maurice Sandak gave over and over again. He didn't say, as they expected, seize the day, carpe diem. Instead, he said, live your life. For someone who grew up in the shadow of the Holocaust and battled with depression, they appreciated this special idea, the idea of living life from him. And, Foyer emphasized, he appreciates the other things that Sandek taught in that interview as well. Live Jonathan in the Sandek real Boyer world. says, So you know, life is precious. And so I ought to throw off the earphones I'm wearing right now, push away the microphone, and run into the street and proclaim whatever. Life is precious, so I ought to spend my days making sandwiches for the homeless and tending to the elderly in hospice care. Life is precious. So I should get everything away, except 
that I live in the world. And in the world, I actually have needs and wants, and I value my needs and wants. And I live in the world, and I can't just go make sandwiches every day because I also have to take kids to school. I also have to, he says, write books because that's my livelihood. I also have to do very, very boring things like separate the recycling from the regular garbage and so on. He doesn't have compost, he doesn't live in Toronto. And the conflict of the wrestling match between th these two ideas, life is precious and I live in the world. These are what influenced my writing. And they're also what I think uh, was kind of, what I think of was in that final sentiment of Maurice Sandak when he said, live your life. Because in that sentence, sentence are both of these world, of both of these ideas. Both life is precious Further and on, that you in live the in the world. Foyer tells this story. He had just finished his first book when he was 25. It had just been published. And he got a letter from Maurice Sandak asking him for a signed copy of that book. So he thought, I'm going to do something really special for one of my favorite authors, for someone who's influenced me so much. I'm going to do something really special for him in the gift of this book. So he went to the store, bought a drill, took a book, drilled a hole through the center of that book, took a six-inch lock, locked the book shut, and thought, signed Here the is something special, something that Maurice Sendak will appreciate. Here is something that is unique. And Maurice Sendak wrote him back saying that he was never going to speak to Maurice him ever he again. He did, though, at the end of his life, start speaking to him once again. Why did Foyer tell this story? Because he's talking about how much he has matured since writing this well, first book. Here I am, he says, takes place His where words. life takes place. It's much less obviously stylized, but I think it's more precise. You know, so much of this book happens in bedrooms and kitchens and living rooms and dining rooms and happens in these intimate conversations that play out over many pages. So when I sent him that book at 25, I thought this is the opposite of ordinary, when really the opposite of ordinary would have been writing him a page or two thoughtfully composed about the ways in which he had, he and his work, the opposite of ordinary had changed my life. Would have really been writing him a page or two thoughtfully about the ways in which he had, he and his work, had changed Today. my life. We are gathered on Yom Kippur to change our lives. Today, we are gathered at this moment of Yiz Kor to remember, to search into our inner selves, to search and on for this memories, day of grandeur, this great moment of our people, this great cathedral in time. Let us promise to focus on the small, on the details where God lives, where Judaism lives, where memory lives. Let us focus on the kitchen conversations, the moments holding hands, the quiet time in the car or in the living room, whispers and hugs, looks shared across the room, and let us commit to doing something unusual, writing letters of thanks and appreciation, writing letters to those we love, either physically, when we go home, when we receive gifts in those special moments, or turning these next few minutes that we're spending together in East Core as a letter of love. Let's tell of our inner thoughts, our fears, and our concerns. How our loved ones remind us of 
the ones we remember. How this thing that you did reminds me of my loved one in the way that you talk to your children, the way that you approach life, of how you remind me of what is valuable and what was sacred in my relationship. For that kind of sharing is rare. For that kind of writing is rare. For these memories, for these details, are where we really find connection. These memories, these details, are how we really find God. Peace Corps. God, remember.